Welcome everyone to the B2B Marketing Perspectives podcast. I'm Steve McDonald, your host. And today we're going to we're going to take on a really tough problem that marketers have. And Vincent Garan is going to help me with this. He's going to be our expert on staff here today. And you are the VP or the head of marketing for a company called Trolley. And you're a payments platform and you work in the music and entertainment space. Do me a favor before we kind of get into what the problem is that we're solving. And it's around content. It's around thought leadership. It's around how do we build our expertise as a company so that we're much more effective in the sales process. But before we get into all that, tell us just a little bit more about you, because we want to know a little bit more about your background and what you're doing at Trolley. Definitely. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Vincent. Uh, I'm from Montreal, Canada. I work for a company, as Steve mentioned, called Trolley. Uh, we're end-to-end -end payout platforms. We serve different supplies of marketplaces. We need to pay contractor, uh, creators, uh, and uh, any independent workers. Um, so really like all the influencer and the creator economy uh, needs to be paid when they do some gigs with brands and all that. So we essentially move the money for, for them and uh, we really deeply integrate with the marketplace uh, so that we become part of their product and they can uh, build their own marketplace in, uh, on top of our product and really grow in different region where they can't reach certain geographies and so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, we, we like to think that we enable different, um, economic opportunities for, uh, people who don't necessarily have access to all the opportunities that we may have in, in, in our own country. So, uh, super proud of our mission. Um, I had the marketing team, uh, um, at Trolley, uh, we're a team of, um, seven at the moment and, uh, planning to grow a lot in the next year or so. And uh, previously I was uh, in other B2B uh, SaaS company and I did uh, my fair share of agencies as well. Was it with the, uh, an agency called Valtech for, the, for eight years almost. So, um, and now I'm, I'm on the other side as we like to say, I'm on the client side. And, and on the side, I teach at university, uh, university called uh, Université de Quebec à Montréal, uh, communication, uh, class in communications and brand. Um, really loving it. Uh, meeting all the younger generation keep you uh, keep you on your toes uh, and uh, push you to always uh, learn and change your mindset with like new generation. When I started, there was no TikTok, and now everybody's on TikTok. So uh, we definitely need to adjust. Well, you've been doing this for roughly twenty years, so yep. I assume you have some pretty pretty foundational insights or beliefs, right? And one of the biggest things that we want to get into here is just the importance of content and B2B marketing. If you could kind of frame that importance for us and your point of view on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, content, I see content as really core of everything you do in marketing, especially in the B2B SaaS space, where it's usually very crowded. You need to stand out. Um, and obviously the inbound, um, channels is always important for B2B SaaS companies. And that's really one of the way you attract people is through, um, your content. So creating content that is meaningful, relevant for your, your audience is by far one of the most important thing, but also one of the most challenging thing, I believe, um, especially in B2B where uh, you may be heading marketing in certain industries where um, you're really not the persona um, or you're clearly not the ICP. Uh, so you really need to think about how you're going to create content that is meaningful for your audience, even though you'll probably never experience uh, the pain that they experience. So for example, we target product managers and um, head of finance, CFOs. Um, we, part of our product solves some tax needs that they have. Um, I'm not a licensed accountant. I can't do, I can file for taxes uh, on behalf of a business. Uh, yet as a marketer, I need to teach them what they need uh, to think about as a marketplace, paying contractors in every part of the world. Um, so that's the, I think that's one of the, the 
uh, one of the key challenges for any marketing team is to create that content engine that's going to fuel your pipeline and your inbound, but also build trust with your audience. Um, and that's really tough to, uh, to do, I believe. Yeah. So building trust, like it's it's been proven in a number of different studies that even more important than the products that you create is the trust in your brand, right? Because B2B buyers, to go onto your platform is a, is a risk, right? It's a big decision. And that decision comes with risk factor, right? And, you, you know, the whole saying, you know, you'll get fired for, you know, hiring <laughs> IBM, right? Because it's a yeah. big decision. So that's something where getting into the mindset of your ICP and understanding what their problems are so that you can help and you can help alleviate those problems. You come in and you educate and you create that trusted advisor role. Now, that trusted advisor role, you have a real point of view in terms of what kind of content you need to create and even a balance of, because there's all kinds of content, right? We're writing sales sheets, we're doing case studies, we're doing white papers, yeah. all kinds of things, right? What kind of content do you need to be in order to create that trust? Do you need to create? And, and you've got a, a theory on kind of like a percentage in terms of where you should at least be focusing on how much and what you should be doing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what you said is 100% right. So I'll quote Chris uh, Walker from Refine Lab. Um, we we'll always say that like 95% um, of your market is not ready to buy. There's only 5% who's clearly ready to buy. Um, and my thought on this is if you create content that's highly promotional, that only speaks about your product, uh, the different features that you release, you really talk to maybe 20% of the market. So that 5% who's ready to buy and maybe that other 15% who's on the verge of needed to buy a, a platform, who's listening a little bit more carefully to all these things. But really that other 80%, they don't, they don't even know they want a new piece of software or they need one piece of software. So that's where um, thought leadership content comes in. Uh, it offers businesses uh, an opportunity to showcase their expertise, uh, build trust, as you mentioned, with potential clients, um, position them, themselves as, as trusted advisors. And as you, as you said, depending on the different industries that, um, that you're in, usually buying a new piece of software is going to involve a lot of things uh, on the business side, maybe some engineering works. Uh, maybe a lot of convincing because there's there will be different processes that will be need to, needed to put in place. Maybe you rip and replace an existing product that your finance team is working with means a bunch of different things as well. So when you come in as a as a vendor, you need to have that trust, and you don't build trust by talking about yourself. When you think about that, if you're in a party and you only talk about yourself. <laughs> You're not going to talk about yourself for a long time. It's going to be very brief conversation and people will venture in other places and you'll be left alone by the fridge drinking your, your beer alone. So um, you need to find ways to um, educate your market, but also entertain them. Uh, that's what's really important, I believe, and, and uh, it's going to help you to really stand out if you're able to do that. Now, because... Um, in the B2B space, most marketers are not the persona or not the ICP. It's really tough for them to earn trust when they create content uh, and find even like truly understanding the market that they market in. Um, that's what I like about B2C or retail. Everybody wears shoes. So if you are to do some marketing around shoes, you know pretty much what are the five things that makes a shoes stand out. Um, marketer who market in the mark, uh, the marketing tech space, um, they are the persona. They use those software. So I would say it's a bit easier, although you need to be very creative because if you've seen those landscape of the MarTech space, it's very, very crowded. So you need to stand out. Um, but if you're in other industry where it's highly technical, you can think about AI or 
um, different software that are deeply in the DevOps space uh, or us on the, uh, in the finance space. I have nobody in my team who's, who's an accountant. So how do you build that trust um, with, with um, CFOs and other finance um, who, who, who read your content and are supposed to be educated and entertained by your content? That, that's really the challenge. Um, so I would say, yeah, this is definitely um, one of the things that marketers need to keep in mind. And when you think about your content calendar or your content strategy, I think what you really want to do is maybe at 15% of your content that talks about you and 85% needs to talk about that. You need to talk about their pain, their challenges, the trend in their industry. What you want ultimately is that you want to be um, the podcast that they listen to when they go, when they go back home on the way back to work. So they're not going to, me, for example, as a marketer, uh, or as a head of marketing who thinks a lot in revenues and all that, I want to hear what other companies do from a revenue standpoint, how they generate revenues and et cetera. More like the strategic thinking. Um, I'm likely not going to listen to a podcast who talks about very granular stuff on tactics and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's my day to day. We talk about tactics all the time. I want to elevate myself a little bit. Um, so you want to be that podcast who provide insight, makes them think uh, on how they can grow. For example, us, we work with Marketplace. I want to be the company that they go to when they think about how do I grow my Marketplace? How do I penetrate new regions? This is what we need to talk about, not talk about new forms of, well, maybe new forms of payments, but I don't have a good example in my head at the moment for, for some stuff that would be a bit off, but definitely we wanna, we wanna spark interest. We wanna entertain them. We wanna educate them with like super relevant content that makes them think um, maybe outside the box sometimes. So that's what they will remember. And that's how they build trust because they will know, oh, this is the company that I always uh, read their content and they're provocative. They makes me think they might have a good product. Let, let's see. Let's see. Let's, let's speak with Sal, see what they have to say about their product. Yeah, interesting the 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 conversation there and how it transitioned to the from the trust to then maybe we'll see about your product, right? Um one thing you said there, so the overall conversation here is around the difficulty of doing this, and you illustrated it really well, right? So like a CFO is a is a core ICP for you. You're not a CFO and you know you're not an accountant, nobody in your team is. But you talked about like one example of podcast, right? So one thing that you can do is you can be the voice of what's going on in the industry and the problems that CFOs are facing because you can invite them onto your podcast, right? You can gain credibility by bringing in the point of view and the insights and how other CFOs are tackling the same problems that you're addressing and even more. So it's, when you had that analogy, I had to laugh about you go to the party. If you just talk about you, you know, you're going to yeah. end up in the corner, like sipping a beer by yourself, right? We've all Definitely. talked to that person before. And that's what happens inside of companies is because we're not the subject matter experts or we have very few subject matter experts, we default to talking more about ourselves. Just like you do at a party, right? You talk out, we we can, I can talk about my babies, my kids all day long, right? At the office, I can talk about what I do and my, my babies, my products all day long, but that's not what they want to hear, right? So that analogy extends to the degree of difficulty it is when you're not the persona, you don't have all the subject matter expertise, yet you have to be this voice of what's going on in the industry. You have to educate them. You have to advise them. You have to help in more ways than even your product is. So that's bringing in outside subject matter experts. Webinars yep. do that. Podcasts do that, right? You know, guest blog posts. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Yep. But before I forget, because I was mentally writing down about eight things I wanted to talk to you about from what you were saying, 
you talked about being creative. And I think that notion is that even though you're a B2B buyer, right? You bought B2B, MarTech, Stack stuff and everything, right? Doesn't mean that you're like some guy that just wants to see all the text and the specs, right? You're a consumer of what's being sold there. So the idea of catching your attention and, you know, in a creative way is really important. Do you have any examples kind of in this B2B world of how you've been creative and how you've tried to get the attention of the buyers? Definitely. Um, I think one of the ways that we're currently exploring at the moment um, is obviously being in the finance or in highly re regulated environment. So we can't do um, what we want all the time. But fortunately, our CEO is very permissive in terms of like what we can do and we can try things, which is amazing. I think what you need to come back to is deeply understanding the channel that you want to use to distribute your content. And um, by understanding the channels, you understand the codes that are being used in that channel. So for example, if for you, Reddit is a prime platform to distribute your, your content and your marketing, you can't do whatever you want in Reddit. Um, you can't just go in there as a company and start spreading links to your blogs and all you, A, you're going to be kicked out. Uh, B, um, well, probably they will troll you a lot before kicking you out and that's no good for your brand. So you really need to deeply understand this. And um, so for us, for example, we launched an ABM campaign recently. Well, actually like uh, three, four months ago. Um, and one of our prime channel for this is LinkedIn because of the mechanism that you can use to target your audience and so on. And we thought about the different formats of content we wanted to create and definitely the memes came as part of the content that people engage a lot with. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, like we're not only doing memes, but we certainly added some mean memes into our stack of different ads and messages that we use. And to be honest, those are the pieces of content that creates the most engagement and mm -hmm. drives the most traffic uh, to our, our, our landing page as part of our campaign and all that. But you do want to have like an healthy balance because you don't want to be perceived as that just like funny brand and whatnot. You'd be, especially in finance, you need to be serious and then all right. that. So we do try to have a good balance, but if you don't understand the channel, you're not going to be able to be creative. And I think what you do need as well is understanding your ICP and your personas. You really need to, to think about what makes them thick, what's um, how they're going to react, like what's the language that they use um, in their industry, what are the jokes that are um, used in this industry. We have jokes as marketers, sales team, have jokes that are like every right. niche as their own joke and codes and all that. So you need to use that in order to make them react. And that's how I believe they will see you as being creative. Creativity doesn't mean, um, you know, those amazing B2C campaigns that we see uh, from big companies like Apple's and Nike and all that. We're not, we don't, we don't have necessarily the, um, the means to do that, uh, the, 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 the money to be able to create those massive, highly recalled ads and so on. Um, so how do you do that in a B2B space? Well, understand how your audience speaks and talk, understand how the content is being shared and created on different channels, put these two together, and you should be able to create some meaningful pieces of content, whether it's ad whether it's a blog post, a podcast, even eBooks or state of kind of like reports. Um, and um, that should create some interest. Yeah. It, it's just, we're, we're real people too, as a B2B buyer and, you know, catching our attention with something creative, something funny, you know, is a yep. great way to do that. There's not enough of that on LinkedIn, by the way. I That's think really there's a, there's a good balance between, being like somewhat serious and educate your market and being funny or at least interesting. 
um, right. because being funny is not always easy, but at least you can be interesting. And then if you mix these two together, you should be able to, to catch their attention because at the end of the day, um, we're in B2B, but you and I are in B2B, but we're humans. We react to the same, um, right. same things. Then if you are in B2C, what's going to create interest to buy this new pair of Nike shoes? Um, that deep, like emotional feeling that you feel when you see this pair of shoes that truly fit what you, your needs, it's the same thing on the B2B side. Like you have something to solve, you're experiencing pain and you want to solve that. You want to be a better marketer. You want to be uh, a better finance person, so on and so forth. So if you're able to tap into that, then it's likely you're going to be able to grow your business. So I want to ask you a question and I'm going to pin you down on an answer. All right. <laughs> Go so ahead. If, if you had to rate the overall importance of content mm. in the success and growth of the business, scale of one to 10, one, not important at all, right? 10, it's vital to the growth and success of the company. Where would you put it on that 10, one to 10 rating? I can can you have multiple tens in your business, or you need to have only one ten? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could make, you could have multiple tens, yeah. I mean, the product is definitely like the most important thing for sure. Like, if you don't have a product, like I don't believe in like um, fake it until you make it, or like right. overselling right. stuff that you don't right. have. Like, it's gonna bite you in the end. Um, but if if we talk in terms of having different bets that you can put uh, in your in your marketing engine and let's say revenue engine, I think content would be uh, probably a 10 or a nine just because nothing is perfect. But <laughs> if, if you create good content, it's gonna be used by everybody. It's gonna be used by your customer success team. It's gonna be used by your support team. It's gonna be used by your sales team. Um, and of course, using your campaigns. Um, so that's why I think the thought leadership idea is for me like a vehicle to kind of like create content, but also distribute your content. It allows you to develop your point of view on something because that's what subject matter experts do. They have a very definitive point of view on the market. They know, um, the old way and then you, they know the new way which is a classic way to frame thought leadership content and um as a company you build that content um, you create toolkits as we call it internally and you involve everybody inside the company from the c-suite to the individual contributors to be able to pick and choose from those toolkits and spread the message and use their own channel, use their own community. If they are a member of like a certain community, then they go, they can go in there and then um, always think about the, I want to add to the conversation, not jump into a conversation and say, Hey, you should check us out. We're the best and all that. You use the content that uh, ideally was created by the, the marketing team who's responsible for content. You tweak it as you see fit and then you use that in your different platforms and your, your different communities. So if you're able to create content like this, um, I think it's very impactful for the business because that's nowadays how people buy. They want to buy from companies they trust and subject matter experts in the B2B space are the people you trust. If you can relate to what they have to say and all that stuff. So if as a marketing team, if you're able to equip your company to be able to um, um, get them going, if you ask your sales team to create content from A to Z, they're not gonna do it, or maybe 5% will, but 95% won't. If you're able to equip them with different talking tracks, different messaging points, different visuals, now they're going to be able to pick and choose and just create the content themselves, which dramatically increase your reach uh, in your market versus the company who post on LinkedIn. Now you have 15 different individuals who post on LinkedIn on behalf of the company, which with the classic six degrees of separation, then you reach everyone. Um, so I think 
if you're able to use content and leverage it in this way, it becomes very, very key uh, to your business. So, and I like the way you framed that at the beginning here, obviously the product, the team, like these are all tens, right? You know, like I'm a SaaS founder myself and pitching for investors, you know, they, yeah, they want to know what the idea is, but they invest in teams. You know? Right. So there's a lot of things that are a 10, but if content is a 10, then how would you rate the degree of difficulty of creating that thought leadership content? Mm. One to 10, like where would you put that on the difficulty scale? And yeah, why? I wouldn't say 10 because there's a lot of ways you can do that. But I would say, especially in the B2B space, in different industries where like for us, it's regulated um, 100% chance, unless we are an accountant to create content for us, like we're never going to have like an accountant to create content for us. Uh, so I would say like maybe a seven, because there's other ways you could, uh, you can learn um, and train your teams on the market, the personas and so on and so forth. And one of the silver bullet for me recently has been gone. I mean, it's just amazing. I don't know if anyone from Gong uh, <laughs> listened to the podcast, but it's just amazing. And I think, don't get me wrong, they're highly successful. They don't need to change their marketing, but Gong should be positioned toward marketers because that's, and for those who don't know, Gong is just a platform who records all the calls, uh, provides search functionalities where you can type a single keyword, brings all the conversation, where the uh, the word was named, you can filter by name. Uh, it was mentioned by someone from your company, someone from uh, the other party and all that. So I really encourage my team to devote some time to listen to gong calls. Ideally, um, you know, prospect who comes from inbound because they came from an ad, they came from content that we created, they came from the product door that we created and so on and listen to the, the conversation, hear what they have to say, um, and, and build your knowledge about their pains, their challenges, what they're trying to solve, what resonate and all that. If you do that, then you should be able to at least have like all the talking track that you need to address from a content point of view. Um, and after that, it's just finding the ways to create that output and that velocity that you want. There's plenty of agency who can help you to create that content um but if you nail it right um all these like we understand that this is what they're trying to solve now after that is just creating the content which is a big feat by itself but it's doable so i think if you don't have the mechanism though to listen to what your customers have to say or your prosec have to say this is where it becomes a lot harder because you create content that you think is interesting for them it doesn't resonate. It doesn't pick up. You don't know what to do. Um, you fail at delivering on your OKRs. And then the whole chain um, yeah. is, is in motion after that. So technically, if you create content that's relevant to your audience, you will stand out. And the only way to do that is listening to them, speaking with them. If you're, if you're uh, fortunate enough to be able to get in touch with customers, that's even better because you, you hear directly what they have to say. Well, we've talked about a lot, Vincent, here, and if there was one short takeaway that you wanted to leave us with, what yep. would that be? I would say um, one of the quotes I like to remember, remember um, or tell the team is focus on them, not you. Um, replace the we by your. So if you post something on LinkedIn, if you create a, a piece of content, Talk to them. Don't talk about you. They don't, yes, maybe they want to know a little bit about what you do and, and what you did, but they likely want to know um, about what they're trying to solve and all that. So focus on them. That's, that's super key for me. And um, thought leadership, leverage your sales team, leverage your revenue team, create toolkits and ways for them to leverage your content and distribute that content, train them on how to uh, leverage um, all the platforms. And if you do this right, then you have a much bigger exposure than what you can, 
what you can have as a company and you get compound benefits from that. So um, it's like um, inside out in, instead of like outside in. You need to think about um, how do you propel everyone in this company to speak to the market and there's a logical way to get there. But yeah, I would say focus on them, not you. That would be the the main takeaway. Well, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing all of this. Um, if somebody wanted to ask you a question to follow up afterwards, it would be appropriate to put a link in the recording and everything to your uh, LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. And uh, you can reach me uh, on LinkedIn, uh, Vincent Garan. Um, just type in Singer and Trolley and uh, you, sh you should find me and then hit me up on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, once again, thank you, Vincent, for coming on and uh, words of wisdom. Thank you.